you know, so one individual can have an awakening, you know, the CEO, the current CEO of Shell could, could realize that, oh, wow, our, our company has been destroying the planet for the last 50 years and creating ecocide, but they'll just be then kicked out, right? And another person steps in and, and fills the role. And that's the system that we're in. It's a system that one individual actor cannot change on their own. Welcome to We Need to Talk, where we try to figure out how to find fulfillment in life and reduce dissatisfaction. Listen to this full episode if you'd like to hear Tom Marshall and I discuss where the fundamental core root of environmental destruction lies and how it has to do with modern humans being out of sync with their own nature. Furthermore, we discuss whether it's enough for single individuals in society to dedicate their lives to protecting the environment or whether one needs to mobilize larger groups in society to prevent the further destruction of our ecological systems. So enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Welcome everybody to We Need To Talk. This channel is dedicated to trying to figure out how to find fulfillment in life and reduce dissatisfaction. My name is Henry, the host of this channel. And today we're joined with Tom Marshall. Tom, do you want to shortly introduce yourself and tell the listener anything you think is important for them to know about yourself? Sure. I'm Tom Marshall. I'm driven by this belief that your work should help you thrive as a human being while making the world a better place. And to do that, I work as a career coach, a speaker, and also an activist. Um, working right now from the Netherlands, but originally from the UK, hence my strange accent. And Henry and I met with the foundation that I set up a few years ago called Extraordinary Life, which helps make personal development accessible for everyone. Awesome. Yeah. Tom essentially built a platform for me to do what I want. And I'm really appreciative of that. So <laughs> that's uh, helped me grow a lot. So let's start with the first question. So as Tom said, he's active with uh, activism. And the first question I'd like to hear your answer to is, what is the core root, do you think, of environmental destruction? The absolute core. I think it comes down to our relationship with nature. So are we part of nature or are we a superior being that stands above nature and has the legitimacy to exploit it? So about 12,000 years ago, when we transitioned from the hunter-gatherer time to the agricultural revolution, we went from being at one with nature, hunting, gathering, moving around, to actually staying in one place and then plundering and exploiting it basically it was the first time where we would actually save up anything more than was just subsistence to get by. So we actually started hoarding and stocking and in that way, almost kind of mass massively exploiting the planet. And that's of course led to some incredible things like incredible um, rises in living standards and population growth and all these amazing things. But meanwhile, we have completely lost touch with our relationship to nature. Because when I'm a climate activist on the streets with Extinction Rebellion, one of the things that we say is we are nature defending itself. It's not that we're trying to save nature. We are part of it. We came down from the trees with all the other primates. It just so happens that we evolved into the beings we are today, able to exploit our environment to such an incredible extent, really. So you, you, you're basically saying the reason we're destroying potentially ourselves is because we have severed the connection to ourselves, AKA to nature. Yes. Hmm. I think that's unbelievably symbolic actually, because it's, I think that is a, a symptom or it is one manifestation of a far greater problem. I mean, you, because you could say we've disconnected from nature, disconnected from ourselves. Okay, I like that answer a lot, but then, okay, so the, the, the follow-up question I wanted to ask you is, well, how do we solve whatever is going on, the problem? So what it comes down to is government intervention at this stage. This is a systematic problem, which is so complex and 
bounds the entire human race across the planet. So what it requires is mass government intervention on a global scale, global uh, cooperation. And the way that I see it is it needs to direct the flow of the market. So capitalism, economic growth can be an incredible thing. We've had wonderful innovations from it. I'm a graduate of economics and innovation management, so I understand that and I appreciate that. But the problem is, if a, the market is not flowing in the right direction to truly benefit humanity, and it's just focused on amassing capital, as, as basically capitalism is all about, then you have mass, exploit, mass exploitation of our natural world at the expense of, of, of that, you know, just, just for additional capital. So what you need is government intervention to actually direct the flow of the market, not to take over the market. The market is an incredible thing, but it needs to direct the flow of that because we cannot expect CEOs, executives of whatever companies to change the way that they operate from exploiting the planet to respecting it and lying within the bounds if that's not what the economic interests are. They're there to, to maximize shareholder value. I don't believe that the CEOs of these fossil fuel companies are bad people. I think they've rationalized why they're doing what they're doing. They, no one wants to think that they're doing bad for the world and their egos will not let them admit that after 30 years working in this company, devoting their lives to it. Um, so they need government intervention to basically force all of them to make the changes required uh, for our entire species. But logically, that doesn't solve the problem, right? Because the problem is that humans are disconnected from nature. And if you, I would assume a, a bottom up approach would solve the problem where you change the individual, but a top down approach where you force the government to impose something on the individual, that doesn't solve the problem long term, right? So the issue with bottom up approaches, as much as I would love that they would work, they haven't worked. We've tried this for decades of, come on guys, let's recycle, let's spend less on energy, let's turn our lights off. Meanwhile, all the pollution is happening at a business systemic level before it even gets to the consumer. You know, you can't, the, the whole idea of basically what um, we've allowed corporations to do is to put the burden onto individuals, you know? And actually, if Coca-Cola had decided 20 years ago, that they would stop producing uh, non-recyclable plastic bottles, then the consumers wouldn't have even been able to buy them, right? And if you, for instance, if governments had decided 30 years ago that, okay, we should probably start investing in planes that run on alternative fuels and we should subsidize that instead of subsidizing fossil fuel industries to the billions and billions of dollars, euros, whatever currency you like for the last few decades and still going on right now, by the way, um, if that if they decided to invest in renewables, then maybe we'd be flying in planes which ran on re renewable energy right now, because you cannot expect a consumer to choose to take the train when the train is three times the price from uh, Paris to London than it is to fly from Paris to London, right? Um, and so I think basically it lies with government intervention to direct the flow of the market in a way which... Um, produces the kind of outcomes we require because the market is a tool. It will flow according to the mechanisms that it's allowed to operate within and flow brilliantly, generating innovations, generating great advancements, but it needs to be directed in the right way. Mm. I think... I get what you mean when you say it hasn't worked, the bottom-up approach with trying to encourage people to, I don't know, correct their behaviors or, you know, live more sustainably. But I think that's because that type of intervention is not what humans need. It's not, that's not the problem. The problem is, I mean, personally, I think the problem is that humans are dissociated they are out of sync with themselves in essence and that sickness of the soul manifests itself in destructive behaviors towards the environment and no i mean i i this is an a hypothesis that i i've thought of that if governments were to strengthen or adjust their their policies, the problem of the sickness of the soul 
will simply shift into a different manifestation and then you have a whole different problem. It won't be solved. So I agree that we are not in touch with ourselves and self-awareness is exactly the value we need both for personal fulfillment and the work that I do as a coach and also in the future we want to create to live more in harmony of nature. Fully agree with that. But the issue is this destruction of the environment is being driven by a social construct, essentially, by a combination of individuals making something that the market capitalism, which is beyond an individual anymore, you know, so one individual can have an awakening, you know, the CEO, the current CEO of Shell could, could realize that, oh, wow, our, our company has been destroying the planet for the last 50 years and creating ecocide, but they'll just be then kicked out, right? And another person steps in and, and fills the role. And that's the system that we're in. It's a system that one individual actor cannot change on their own. Just right, what requires government intervention uh, all around the world simultaneously to take place. But I, I agree with your point that there's an individual level, there is a problem, right? I fully agree with, with that. But you cannot change a systematic problem with just changing a few individuals. You need actually. Um, and we need to do it fast, right? You know, if I'm, I think this is more of a, a long-term thing over time where we can bring about these cultural shifts and consciousness and awareness, however you want to define it. But there needs to be right now uh, a shift. And the only way that can happen fast is through government intervention, as we've seen from this pandemic, right? We have seen from a pandemic that overnight, the government can click its fingers. All right, everything locked down, everything closed, this and this happens, and then st stuff still works. We're still, most of us are still relatively happy for, for those that have been, you know, have, have not suffered so much from this pandemic, although a lot of people have, right? GDP has dropped by 5% or forecast to drop by 5% globally. But is the average person 5% less happy on this planet? I don't know. I, I don't think so. And that begs a whole new question around redefining what wealth actually is and what GDP actually is, which is a whole nother thing. Um, but what was my original point that I was making there, Henry? Can you try and summarize what I was just saying? Because I've completely forgotten as, as I'm heading down this rabbit hole towards redefining GDP. Yeah. So you, you think that a few individuals finding enlightenment or reconnecting with themselves is not enough to solve the problem before it reaches a point that there's no turning back, sort of? Yes. So if you've, if you've read the science around the climate crisis... Um, what the science says is globally, we need to be at net zero GDP, sorry, net zero GDP, net zero CO2 emissions by 2025 to have a two in three chance of keeping the temperature rise to, according to pre-industrial level, uh, pre -industrial levels to 1.5 degrees, right? And that was the big thing with the Paris Climate Agreement that we would try our best to keep it to 1.5 degrees, otherwise it would be two degrees. According to the current pledges right now, what has been pledged in the climate agreement, Paris climate agreement, um, if all those pledges were actually held up, we'd be on track for a three degree temperature rise right now, which scientists say is catastrophic. And that's assuming all the pledges will be actually keep kept. Last time I checked, only Morocco was actually keeping to that. Morocco, right, of all countries. So yeah, they're solar panels. Th things need to happen now. And this is why Extinction Rebellion's first demand, or second demand, I should say, is net zero by 2025. And that's not realistic. That's very impractical. That's incredibly difficult. But that's what the science says is necessary. If, if you read the papers from the IPCC, the Intercontinental Panel on, on Climate Change. And that the, 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 the climate uh, Paris Agreement estimates that or based on the, the that agreement, we'll reach a three a three degree increase in temperature by when? Do you know? Um, I don't know by when that is, to be honest with you, Henry. Mm -hmm. But we're on track on track towards that, basically. And right now we're at one point one degrees. So you already yeah. see the issues happening now. And you know, I could throw out a number and say, oh, we'll be two degrees by twenty thirty. Some people, I, I believe, are saying that, but I could be completely bullshitting there. I'm allowed to say that, that word on this show, Henry. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure how, how young your audience was. No, no, that's fine. Mm. Okay. Yes. I think... I, I mean, I really can't discuss on the, the data because I have not read the articles, scientific articles myself, so I don't feel comfortable to really comment on it. However, I do would like to comment on one thing 
the idea that a few individuals cannot change the system, I think that is incorrect because this is also a reason it's, it's actually, I think it's ironic because I honestly think that idea that a few individuals are incapable of changing the whole system is a consequence of not understanding human nature and the dynamics of social groups or just human groups in general because one i i have this i i like to describe it with the following image the world is a swimming pool and you're you're treading water in the middle of it now if you move a singular muscle the ripples will be felt across the entire pool and i do think with every single action you take second by second throughout the day, you are changing the fate of the world. And this is a really simple example. You might walk out into the street, bump into somebody and start talking with them. And then long story short, they offer you a job, you move across the world and set up some million dollar business that changes the world all because you bumped into somebody and you have the potential to bump into people all the time throughout the day and change their lives positively and set off these ripple effects that shift the world and that you can do that. That's in your... So I, I fully agree, Henry, that, that we can have influence and we can make a change. But taking your analogy back to the ripples, the climate crisis right now, one person is like there being a 100 ton cruise liner in the sea, I jump from the shore side into the sea and I splash my hands down in the water. It will create a ripple, but that cruise ship is not gonna move, right? And so that, that's the issue because it's such a big complex problem. But if you would get a hundred um, tugboats, right? Uh, which all attach ropes in, to the cruise ship and they all pull at the same time, then they could move it. One person alone can have ripple effect. We see that with Greta Thunberg, right? Um, but I, I don't believe in the one man or one woman theory of history. I think Greta is an incredible human being and love, love her and what she does. But if it wasn't her, it would have been someone else. People are a product of their circumstance. And so many people have changed the world. But if it wasn't uh, Martin Luther King Jr., it would have been someone else. If it wasn't Gandhi, it would have been someone else. As much as I adore and respect these people and think they're absolutely incredible, I believe that people are a product of, of their times. And I, again, agree people can can make a difference, make an influence. Otherwise, I don't think you and me would, would do what we do if we felt like we wouldn't be able to make a difference. And as part of a collective of activists of Extinction Rebellion, I feel incredibly influential. I do feel like I can change the world when I'm out there on the streets. But with a problem as complex as this, rather than one person splashing in the ocean, we need you know these hundred tugboats pulling that massive cruise liner, which is the planet and, and the economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think about, there's, there's one subset belief that is frequently included in argumentations for why we need to take action against climate destruction, which is that the world is overpopulated. I find there's something honestly disgustingly dangerous about that belief because it implies humans are a burden 